Hey guys, welcome to Done With Depression. Today we're talking about my experience in a psychiatric hospital, also known as an inpatient hospital. Um, so I called the EAP, picked me up from my last video. They weren't any help. Went to the emergency room. They kept me overnight. In the morning, I was transferred to an inpatient facility. Now, if you're held on a 5150, this is part of your hold. So your time starts while you're at the hospital when you first get your 5150, um, which is a 72-hour hold, and then it goes through your time at the inpatient facility. So I was transferred to an Adventist Health um, inpatient facility. Um, I was not not super religious or anything. That just happens to be where I ended up. Um, it was quite a long ride there in the ambulance um, or a transport vehicle, but it wasn't too bad. Um, the paramedics were pretty nice, asked me questions. Um, they don't necessarily just transport psychiatric patients, um, so they deal with a lot of different people, and they're not really knowing of some of your issues that you're going through. But I got to the inpatient facility. Um, there was a lot of inpatient um, paperwork and intake that you have to do when you first get there. Um, they had me change out of clothes. I had to do, um, they inspected me to make sure I wasn't bringing anything into the facility. They took anything that you can harm yourself away from you. So the drawstring and my hoodie. Um, they took my shoes because I didn't want them to take the shoelaces out. Um, drawstring and your shorts if you have those. They make sure you're on lockdown pretty much. Um, so there's a whole intake process and it takes a couple hours and they ask you questions over and over again about why you're there, um, what kind of insurance you have, issues that brought you here, if you have any other medical conditions, so on and so forth. So eventually they take you to um, your room. In this case, um, my room had two beds in it, so I had a roommate, and then there's a bathroom in between that connected to another room with two beds. Um, so there are four people total using the bathroom facility that we had, and it happened that it was me, my roommate, and then there was only one person on the other side. So there was only three of us using the bathroom. Um, they give you all of the things that you're gonna need, toothpaste, hairbrush, soap, um, all of that good stuff. And then they kind of introduce you to the program, tell you what's going on, show you the board. Um, there's a board where it had all of the groups that we were doing for the day, and that changes throughout the day. Um, they typically had two shifts there that I remember. Um, so there was like a morning shift and a p.m. shift. Um, they might have done another shift in the middle of the night. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then when they transitioned from the morning shift to the PM shift, they would change the board so you would know what your activities were for the day. I got there on a Saturday morning, and there's not a lot of group things going on. So Saturday, Sunday, you're still not going to get a lot of therapy. Not a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a common room where you can hang out and watch TV. Um, they serve you food three times a day. There's snacks, there's cards, puzzles. Um, a lot of people in this psychiatric facility had some psychosis problems. So there was some yelling and screaming. Um, there were some people in there with slight retardation. Um, mostly the psychosis was a little bit harder to deal with. Um, there is one, the guy that was across the room from us was schizophrenic, so... He talked about the devil and Jesus battling a lot, and he had these elaborate conversations in his head. And he would sometimes scream at them, uh, which made it rather difficult to sleep. Um, you eventually see a weekend psychiatrist. Uh, the weekend psychiatrist that I saw wasn't my normal psychiatrist the rest of the time that I was there, so you're kind of seeing different people all the time, and it's a little confusing at first to figure out what people you're talking to. There's like a case manager. There's another person like for whatever insurance you have. There's a therapist. There's a, um, a psychiatrist. And then there's all the different leads that do the different groups. And so it's a little difficult at first to figure out who's who. 
and what's where and all that sort of thing. Um, but once you get settled in, it's not too bad. Um, the food ended up being pretty decent there. Um, I practiced a vegan diet. They were able to get me the food that I needed. Um, I did request a different milk a couple times and they weren't able to accommodate that on a regular basis. Um, they had the almond milk that I was requesting, but it never really made it onto my tray. Um, besides that, the food was decent. They def definitely give you enough food. Um, it's not top quality or anything like that, but if you need more food or less food, they're definitely accommodating. Um, so talking about the groups, a lot of the groups that we did were like art and recreational groups. Um, there's a lot of mindfulness activities, chair yoga, arts and crafts. And then sometimes they would just skip groups altogether and they wouldn't tell anyone. So it's on the board. There's not a lot to look forward to throughout the day. So these groups and this treatment that you're paying for is essentially all that you have to look forward to the entire day. And when they didn't do it, it was a little frustrating sometimes. Um, also, all of the groups started about 10 minutes late and finished about five minutes early. So for me, I'm a numbers guy thinking about how much I'm paying to be there and that sort of thing. So it's a little frustrating for me that you are suicidal, you're paying for treatment to be there. This is like maximum security and they're canceling groups, starting groups late, <laughs> ending groups early. You're just missing out on some of the treatment you're getting. Um, a lot of the staff were really nice. I really liked almost everyone there. Uh, a lot of interns were there as well, and their groups that they led were some of the most beneficial to me. Um, the intern groups were usually more of the process groups, where you get to talk about why you're there and kind of some of the stuff that brought you in and start to process some of the things that have been impacting your life. So the intern groups I found to be most beneficial to me. Uh, there's lots of watching movies. You get to go outside once in a while if the weather's nice. I happened to be there in early February, so it was really cold outside. It rained a couple times. Um, it's nice to just kind of go out and see what's going on. But besides that, um, there wasn't really a lot to do outside. Uh, what else do I have for you guys? Uh, sleeping there is very difficult. Um, it was cold. Um, on The walls were all concrete, so it was, got pretty cold at night. Um, I did ask for an extra blanket, and they gave me an extra blanket. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but it's rather difficult to sleep, especially when people are yelling and screaming. Uh, the guy across from me had schizophrenia, and he would often yell and scream throughout the night. So it was very difficult to sleep in that situation. Uh, they did offer me a sleeping pill that I ended up taking for a couple days and anxiety pills. Uh, but the facility itself is pretty pretty difficult to sleep in. And in some cases, it can raise your anxiety a little bit when all of that stuff is going on around you. Um, but besides that, my overall grade of the inpatient facility is probably about an 8. I got a lot of help that I needed while I was in there. It's definitely a safe place to be if that's what you need. And it was definitely beneficial, kept me safe, and kind of got me on the right track to get help for some of the mental issues that I was having. Um, another side note, the 72-hour hold, they often extend and it becomes a 52-50. Um, I think one of the rules is if they're altering your medication while you're there, they can't release you um, the day that they alter your medication. And so when you have a weekend psychiatrist and then you get to see your actual real psychiatrist on the week, that kind of ends on your 72-hour hold day. And so then <laughs> you have to alter your medicine again, kind of figure out what works while you see your normal psychiatrist. So I ended up staying for six days rather than three days. Uh, my psychiatrist was pretty open to me choosing when I got to leave. Um, I probably could have gone a day early um, if I chose to do that, but I really wanted to get as much help as I could while I was there. And if they were switching up my medicine, I wanted to give it 
a couple days to um, see if I was going to have any reactions to it. So overall, I would give it about an 8, I think I said. Um, food was pretty good, kind of hard to sleep. You get some help that you need. Uh, treatment isn't much on weekends. Some of the staff on weekends are different than during the week, which makes it a little complicated. Um, but yeah, pretty good overall. Um, stay tuned for my future videos on my experience um, going through the mental health system. Make sure to check out the description below. I have the two books that I just read, one that I just read and one that I'm reading right now. And there's links to um, check them out if you're interested in those books as well. So feel free to like, subscribe, tell a friend that might be going through depression, and we can work on this together. Thank you guys. Have a great day.